Now, you know what? I owe a lot to Keith. <laughs> it's actually because of Keith that I'm where I'm at today. What Keith did for me was... Um, Got rid of his name, Little Kevin the Bastard. Little Kev the Bastard. That was my name. Patrice, you remember. Uh, I went by Little Kev. Um, one night, we're out. It's crazy. <laughs> we're there having a good time. And uh, I met Keith. And what he said, he said, young fella. That's how you said it. You I did. I said, young fella. You man. did say it. My, my boot is on time. You did. Uh, Keith Robinson. What's okay. up, man? Hey. All right. So, hey, everybody. This is Mike, and I'm with my, my good friend. Yes. Years, man. It's going on years now. Keith Robinson. All right. So Absolutely. This, this is uh, an abbreviated um, pot, like conversation. We got. We have to have you back, and I want to talk about yeah. all the Philly stuff. and oh, Everything. And but I just want because you, you had a great night here. Welcome back. Yes. This is kind of like, uh, well, it's always a homecoming to be back in Helium, of course. Yes, 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 yes. But um, kind of yeah. kind of full circle for me and a little bittersweet because, uh, you know, I don't know if you want to tell people who you, who you had your surprise guest was. Oh, my surprise guest tonight was a little dummy, Kevin Hart. <laughs> yeah, so he, he, he came, came here, he blessed his stage, and he's got some good stuff. And it's pissing me off. It was real good. <laughs> yeah. So, it's, so it's, he it's was... He's got some stuff that's like, uh I think it's the beard. Yeah, it's a scraggly look. <laughs> but he came through, and he he's just amazing. Right. Well, yeah. a lot of people, they've seen, like, that little backstage footage. I mean, what you, yeah, why you brought me Yeah, backstage way back, yeah. So when I, when I, the minute I saw Kevin, I was like, oh, wow, this is kind of bittersweet for me because Patrice is Patrice, there. yeah. Uh, yeah, he would have been there, too. Patrice O'Neill, that, that's, All yeah. Right, so people... People always want to, people like Patrice is everybody's hero, and you know what? What is about Patrice? People, I mean, like, like years later, ten years later, still catching up to it. Yeah, they're just catching on to. Well, he is about to be on fire, like a major, major force, mm -hmm. and um, you know, he, he passed away, mm -hmm. and everybody misses him because you know he was an honest dude, mm -hmm. and they loved that. They love that honesty, and they miss that. You know, they love and they miss that honesty. Well, so, I, you know, I always tell this story. First time I saw Patrice was at the cellar. You guys were upstairs in the restaurant, and he was. You guys were rolling craps on. One of oh those yeah, we were playing chalk, chalk tables or whatever. You know where you write, the, yeah, you can we, draw we on we the shoot table. dice. <laughs> y'all, y'all brothers took it over. But um, if you could share a Patrice story for me of a tree story yeah there's so many it, it, it's like uh, you know he was like my younger brother mm -hmm. you know when i met the guy he's like i like this guy mm -hmm. and um he just you know I, watching him grow as a comic and as a person was amazing mm -hmm. and to see that it's like uh Wow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we did so much together. Mm -hmm. And going to his cookouts and just hanging out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that was a serious brother, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I loved him like a brother. Got mad at him like a brother. <laughs> you know, when you, you know, love somebody, you get mad at him. Right. Like you're supposed to get mad at him. Like, I'm not talking to you. Mm. <laughs> you know, but... Uh, that was my real brother, though. Right. But, but tell me something, a story you might not have heard, something he did. A story you might not have heard about Patrice. Uh, in Montreal, this guy handed Patrice his, you know, Patrice said, let me see your headshots and let me see what they look like. Mm -hmm. And the guy like, gave him his headshots <laughs> and he ripped them up right in front of the guy. <laughs> 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 he tore them. <laughs> he tore them. He ripped him up in front of him like, S -s 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 -s. <laughs> the guy got so bad. He was like, because <sighs> it's Montreal. Uh -huh, just You're for supposed last, to have right? your, yeah, the Just for Last, big festival. And he's trying to, you know, the guy was trying to do some, you know. Mm -hmm. Like hustle, yeah. Hustling yeah. and stuff, man. He's trying to, you know. Just no filter. Yeah. But Patrice, well, people, yeah, he got Jamal that night on the on the video that we show. Who, Jamal Doman and yeah, yeah, that, was yeah. A, that was that was the first time I met Kevin, so I thank you for that. But um, 
I mean, well, you know, as we know, Patrice, he he had a stroke, and but he yeah. did survive. And and I know, like you're you're coming back. That's so good to see. Coming you. back, yeah, I had a stroke, man. Like Patrice had his stroke in two thousand. Was it? Eleven. That's right. Yeah, around the elephant in the room was two, two, 2011. Eleven and twelve. He was he here had a, a week stroke. before he had the stroke. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you never know. I had my stroke after that. Like 2016, February. Right. And uh, I'm too dumb to realize that I was in danger. I'm like, huh? I, I got my car and drove. What? Yeah. I was having a stroke. I flared the car. I said if I could just make it to my car. And, you know, got my car, drove home. Half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Your lucky brother. Was Yeah. Wait. So, all right. So, all right. So, I haven't seen you since. I tried. I know... So this you had taped the special on Netflix before this, obviously. Yeah, before. And you're like you were on the rise in, in a way because that yeah. was about to hit, and then I had well, you a just nice you just home stroke. you just went home one day you felt it or you didn't know you. Felt I went it. home and had a stroke like it list looked like it lasted for a full day because mm-hmm. I woke up first time my equilibrium is off so mm-hmm. I'm walking leaning mm-hmm. I'm like wow what's going on maybe. I don't know. But then I got in the car again, took some buffering. <laughs> My dumb what, ass. Robitussin? Yeah, what, Robitussin. Like people, uh, what, you had Obamacare now, didn't you? R- rub, yeah. Oh, you just didn't want to go. Rub my leg with alcohol. See, this is black people do this. Uh, it should be all right after this alcohol dip. And, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and uh, you know, drove to Philly first. I drove to Philadelphia was filling out my passport because I had to go somewhere. Okay. But I'm having a stroke then, too. Wow. And uh, my foot started going down, really. My foot was going, I was dragging up the steps. And um, my cousin said, you you may be having a stroke. I'm like, shut your dog on mouth. You're a wimp. You don't know. I'm a Robinson. I'm a man. You know, Robinsons don't have strokes. Got back in my car, drove back to Jersey, Mm -hmm. North Jersey, actually 11. Mm -hmm. And I got some sleep, got back up feeling pretty good. Went to sleep on the stroke. Yeah. And you had all these these signs. Yeah, all these signs. I go to sleep on a stroke. Then I go into New York. I'm feeling fine. I'm in New York now. You know, blood clot must have passed. Or whatever. Okay. And I go into New York. I'm doing this radio show. I do the radio show good. Then after I do the radio show, all my energy dropped. Wow. And uh, I was like, oh, what's going on? And uh, I get once again, leg is going down, everything, da 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 da. So I said, I got to get to my car. That's how I had to get to my car. Okay. You just thought that. You said, I got to go. Yeah. Do well, you, you well, know how close to death you were? No. Okay. No. All right. Okay, because you're Robinson. Yeah, I'm a Robinson. Um, not to cut you off. Only you know that. No. <laughs> but I, um, you know, called my son's mom. Mm-hmm. And, of course, she get mad at me. I'm like, well, something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Rode home again. Then a friend of mine took me back to Mount, si- Mount Sinai mm-hmm. in New York. Mm-hmm. And they say, you're having a stroke. Wow. I'm like, oh. <laughs> right. The full day that I'm laying up in the hospital, like, uh, if only I took my blood pressure medicine. Oh, is that what, do you think that was the cause? That or? was the cause. Okay, so, you, so, what, so for, for people out there, like, I know I'm at risk for this stuff, and, and Patrice certainly, you know, I mean, it's just America, you know, so it's, it's tough. So what... What are, what are some of the things that, that you're doing differently now? That Eating better. Okay. Staying away from high sodium stuff. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm on a Mediterranean diet. Mm. And, I, you know, I lost weight. You look good. And uh, it's better for you. And uh, I take my pills. All right. My blood pressure pills. <laughs> okay. I pop them like one a day. Okay. Now. Now, and you're getting stronger. Stronger, yeah. Now you're going to get this I, back? I was in a wheel. Yeah, I'm gonna get it back because okay. I want it back. Okay. You know, you gotta want this thing first. Well, Pornhub wants you. You spent. You're losing money. 
Yeah, man. <laughs> anyway. But, you know, just, you know, he, hey, it is what it is, man. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just. Well, uh, we're, we're lucky to have you yeah. back. I mean, and now you're on borrowed time, so the sky's the limit. Right. That's the most important thing. Yeah, you, you just, you know, hey, you do it. It's right. like you, you, you look at it and like, wow, what lessons did I learn or whatever, and, and go from there. I think I think you're act. You, I mean, you were funny before, but I think this gives you even, like, I mean, I, yeah. you ki- you literally killed tonight. I wanted I wanted like more, you know, like, you know, I, I wanted to see the full hour, but but yeah. you know, it's a trade off. Um, but so yeah. so trade off a little dummy. A <laughs> couple a couple things. I, I need a Kevin Hart story, but before I do that, I know. All right, I'll, I'll just I'll just set up. There, there's there's a joke I've been waiting for you to tell. And you didn't do it on any of your specials, but it's one of the funniest things. Um, this reality TV thing. There was a show back in the day to catch a predator. Right. Well, How did that go? I, you know what? I forgot the joke. That's why I, I forgot it. Oh, well, we, we, you know, all right. Um, well, the, your, your reaction to when, if the guy busted into the room and. Yeah, what was that joke? Oh, God. All right, so we'll, we'll I have to remind them, and then we'll come. You know, so it's like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, do you, do you know why you're here? And it's like, yeah, I came here, blah blah blah. You know, like I came here, I came to fuck. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I forgot the joke. Oh, that's why you never told it. Yeah, I, you know. Did you make it up? Is, was that the only time I saw it? No, nah, no, but you know, you forget stuff. When you're a comic, you forget some of the stuff and you don't get it on if you don't record it or get it on tape okay soon enough you forget it oh wow okay and then you go somebody reminds you of oh yeah okay. well do you remember it enough now or do we it's all gone it's gone ah well you had to be in the room just like you had to be in the room tonight so um you know we, we got to catch up we gotta really got to talk about it, all this stuff yeah so what's what's going on with the world right now i mean there's racism and Trump and Trump. all this Trump stuff. is going over the world. This guy is beefing with Snoop Dogg and T.I. Can you believe the President of the United States is going back and forth with T.I. and Snoop Dogg? He's, he's, this guy is pathetic. Mm-hmm. Really. And people try to say all the time, well, he's smart behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I sing good behind closed doors. <laughs> it's in front of people that that counts. He's a dummy out in public. He's just, he's one of the dumbest men I've ever seen. Mm. Well, I take it you didn't vote for him then. I couldn't. Yeah, I mean, no. But you know, it's not because oh well, what do you think of Trump and this and that? No, it's it's just this guy is he's no good. He's yeah. not a president. Mm-hmm. You just had. Obama, who was one of the smartest dudes out there, mm-hmm. smart, stately man, just boom. Mm-hmm. That, that's a president. Mm-hmm. And then you get Trump after that. That really is, is it hurts your feelings almost mm-hmm. to see a guy that has no respect for what he's doing, mm-hmm. who just wants to be out there. But, I mean, if you believe the election, he he, he beat I mean, Hillary, you know, she was probably overqualified for the job. Hillary was was very overqualified. And she she ran a scared campaign. Mm -hmm. She was scared. Mm -hmm. She was trying to, you know, hide behind Michelle Obama. And Michelle Obama was bringing the heat. Mm -hmm. But she, you know, Trump just had that. Mm-hmm. Element where he promised, let's face it, white men jobs. Mm-hmm. And they said, yeah. And you can't blame them, really, because they you're like, we can finally get our jobs back. Mm-hmm. You know, I said, uh, you know, on stage tonight, they act like he's the first white president. Like they ain't never had one before. Mm-hmm. It's like you have 43. Right. There'll be more. 43 in a row. Yeah, in a row. <laughs> A dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> but one black guy throw you off that bad? 
Well, you know, I mean, I want to, you know, and God knows what Trump is doing in that White House. When he found out about, if it's true, and I believe it is, the whole thing in Russia with the bed and the, yeah, you know, that's just, you know, sour grapes, I guess. But And more, it's like he just says stuff, he, like he lies, outright lies. Mm-hmm. President Obama's wiretapping me. Mm-hmm. All right, prove it. Uh, no, I want y'all to investigate it. Wait a minute, where's your proof? Mm-hmm. What are we, kids? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. Well, he, I wish my president would stay off Twitter. Well, not my, my president, but I wish our president would stay off Twitter. Um, yeah, well, he ain't my president. Not, not, he hasn't earned that yet. Yes. Well, if he can earn it, maybe. Well, ho- hopefully by the time you're watching this, uh, all this nightmare will be over. Impeach. Impeach. Like he said, lock her up. I want impeach Trump. <laughs> And peach that orange face. <laughs> oh, right. I can't stand well, two two more things. I know. I mean, you started before. No, no. I want to still talk about Trump. No, okay. guy. <laughs> no, I know you got to go. You got your whole family yeah, here yeah. and your son and all that stuff. So, um, the Get Out. That's every, what everybody's going to see. I see. love Get Out. Okay. Yeah. Why? 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 Like, I mean, everybody is loving Get Out. Why? What makes this so unique, and what does it say about Hollywood? Uh, you know. I, to be, I love the well. To be fair with it, I didn't see it. Okay. But I know that everybody was telling me about Lil Rel mm-hmm. and then how great he is. And Jordan Peele just did an amazing job directing it. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm like, wow. Mm-hmm. They said he was almost like really good, historically mm-hmm. good mm-hmm. with his direction. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's a nice dude, man. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and to see him putting out movies like that, and we just hope for more like that. Absolutely. Oh, uh, it, did you see any movies that were nominated for Oscars? Do you have anything on that? Fences. Okay. I love Fences. Mm-hmm. At first, you look at it and say, "Well, that's a play," but then you look at you really get into the acting and all that. Mm-hmm. Viola Davis is amazing, mm-hmm. and it's good to see that man. Mm-hmm. Real black actors and actresses. Yeah. Denzel is just like he's always my favorite. My new guy is uh, the one that played in um, uh, what's that? Uh, uh, what's that dog on movie? Midnight. Oh, Moonlight. Moonlight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the mm-hmm. what's his the, name? The, the Muslim order. guy. Okay. Oh, um, Mar- 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he's I love in everything. I Luke, love him. Luke he, Cage, hidden he, hidden he, figures. He's my next Denzel or whatever. He's so good, you can just feel this guy. Mm-hmm. Like Denzel, his walk is Oscar worthy. Just how he walks, his struts. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, that's good. He's good. Mm-hmm. He's an actor. Yes. You know that. Look at that. Well, you know, I've been in some stuff. That's not acting. Mm-hmm. Denzel can. You can see the acting. Like, wow. Mm-hmm. He's so good. Mm-hmm. You know, of all the Davis, you, you should, they, I when I watch good acting, it's like watching a good basketball game. Mm-hmm. Like wow, they're really playing because mm-hmm. you can see how good they are. You know, definitely. And well, I, I love well, that. Well, I mean, speaking speaking of, so I mean, just to circle, we'll wrap it up. So I mean, Kevin, the reason why he was here tonight is because he filmed a movie here in Philly. Yes, he's filming uh, Untouchable. Yeah, are you involved in any of that? No, or? no, but he's telling me about it. He's, Man, I like to see him. He's so blessed. And, you know, you, one thing you like to do is see people live out that dream. Mm-hmm. And that you are part of them living that dream out mm-hmm. feels good. So to watch Kev just, you know, get on private planes and all that, and you see this boy like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I told him he could do that one day. Mm-hmm. When you can do that and, and, and try to guide somebody into something, and you see them actually live out that dream and mm-hmm. get to get what they want. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Definitely, yeah. And that's the that's the full circle. So, I mean, I mean, think just thinking back to that room that that just the you know Kevin Kevin had already done Soul Plane, but he was sort of in the middle of something. Yeah. At that point, I mean, like just for the people that don't know and just watch and they like they just see the outcome. They don't you see know, the like, process. Like that was that was that was kind of a rough patch there between yeah. Soul Plane and I guess Think Like a Man. I mean, yes, is you know, but he kept he keeps working, man. This kid works hard. Mm-hmm. It's no, you know, just play that people hand you stuff. 
-hmm. He worked hard for everything. Mm -hmm. Hustling, you know, hustling, 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 hustling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the outcome is great. Mm -hmm. But the work process and how he works, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just look at that and you go, and it helps you keep working. All right, so assuming Kevin's not going to watch this, tell, tell us a story on Kevin, and then we'll get out of here. A story on Kev. Mm -hmm. Well, when I first met Kev, at, it was at the Laugh House. Oh, down the street, South Yeah, Florida. like 99, 2000. Okay, so that's when black, black folks are taking it over from David. Yeah, that point. Okay. and I see this kid on stage. I said, I like this kid. And then he seen me there and said, watch this. Like, and he bombed a little bit. But he was funnier. He didn't know he was funnier with his bomb. But he didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to do better. So he did this crazy stuff. Listen to the music. Everybody can do something to this. Da da da. And what he thought was good wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was like, uh, oh, he don't know what's good yet. So I told him to come to New York where everybody work at. Mm -hmm. And you know, you'll see what what it is. Mm -hmm. This is where the people work. And New York is like workshop. And he started getting his rhythm mm -hmm. and start getting his bob together right. and meet more people. Like, oh, man, I'm, I'm amongst people who are actually doing something. Mm -hmm. See, when you're in Philly, you ain't around that. Right. They don't, you know, everybody's just mm -hmm. looking for the next bar mm -hmm. to work at. Mm -hmm. The next... Yeah. You know, well the, well, the cellar has its own energy, too. Well, the comedy cellar has a lot of energy, a lot of people that come through. And he's, he's around all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. He's around different types of people. Mm -hmm. And um, his energy meant, meant everybody else's energy. His energy meant Patrice's energy, meant Bill Burr's energy, mm -hmm. meant Colin Quincy, David Tell, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever. Everybody's right mm -hmm. there. Mm-hmm. And he started to see it. And and this is the man. You, like this is the hidden history right here. You're you're, you're clocking what ninety miles each way. You're dri you're paying the gas driving him yeah. up there. Yeah, we, we get in the car, pay the gas, going back up, back and forth. And my Ford Focus. <laughs> <laughs> We're back and forth. You know, driving up the turnpike, sleep on an exit eight all the time. We go right to exit eight, sleep okay. head to head, sleeping. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's a blessing right so it does come true man yeah and thank you thank you i mean you you know you you put you've helped so many people i don't even know yeah. if you realize that man yeah you know because everybody's like busting each other's chops i mean but but there's just so many people that i mean just your grind too honestly because yeah. you you know like you i mean I, like we'll have to do like a memoir or something like yeah when when this gentleman was coming up he was like the only black face in philly yeah. comedy and He's made a way, and, yeah. and I think it's everybody's duty to make a way for, for the yeah, next. You have so. to. You have to. You have to reach out. You know, when I started, you know, it was just like that. It was just a lot of white guys helping out white guys, and which is okay. But I'm like, wow, I can't keep looking at them, and they're not giving me nothing. So I'm gonna start my own. Mm -hmm. And uh, real talk, I'm just. Mm -hmm. Real talk on real black. It's like I just said, hey, look, I'm going to start my own group, Comedy Express, and we're going to start something. Mm -hmm. And that was a blessing. You know, Wanda Sykes was in it. Everybody was in it. Tony Woods, mm -hmm. you know, Warren Hutchinson. You know, mm -hmm. we had a whole show. We used to put on shows at Community College. Mm -hmm. And they tell us, well, you're not going to do nothing. We can't sell out. We sell, sold it out 600 mm -hmm. people strong. Mm -hmm. Then we started a TV show mm. way before Def Jam. All the black comics on there, da da da. Eighty seven, eighty eight. Okay, we I gotta get that. put a Def Jam thing together. I have to show you that. So you know, it, mm. it, it was, uh, you know. Then we did uh, Comedy Express Love Award on Prism. Mm. Oh, Prism! My God. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you, that just blew up a synapse in my head. Yeah, we so, did a lot of stuff. All right. Well, we we gotta go. So, I mean, like, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know this is like your homecoming. Welcome back. And just, I mean, it's it's just thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all I can say. Um, you know, just more more people just need to know you. And then what you you're working on a special now? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, another special. I'm gonna call Keith Robinson. Hundred percent black. Okay.
to be continued. So if you enjoyed this, right, because he's literally like a gang, half a Philly was up in this club, and, yeah. and they're waiting for him to go eat. So if you enjoyed this, tell, tell everybody in the comments how much you love Keith and how much you can't wait to go see his special and go yeah. see him live because that's the best way to experience it. And then you never know what's going to happen because yeah, you know you don't absolutely. know everybody in the world. So There you go. So, and go see Trainwreck. You Train wreck the you movie, yeah, you crashing, crashing on HBO. HBO, check it out. But you know, more importantly, man, just support comedy, support folks, black folks especially. No, white folks, black folks, whoever you find funny, go to that. But comedy is important art because mm -hmm. we bring the we bring the noise. Yeah, I mean, we bring, we talk about it, and we do it. Chappelle, Chris Rock. Louis C.K., Bill Burr, Wanda Sykes. Go see them all, man, and enjoy the whole experience of comedy. It's a good thing. Spoken like a true MC. Thank you so much, man. Yes, sir. Uh, the problem. All right. Everybody knows Jamal. Jamal. Tasker Projects, hey. I think he lives in. You from Philly, you, you know, know Jamal. Jamal. That's Jamal Dolman. Jamal Dolman right there. Hi, hey, everybody. What do you mean, everybody? Six people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sure? Know. I just want to. I just want to. Get oh, you want to talk to Keith? Oh, okay. Just yeah. This is for the promo. Then we'll right. do separate interviews. Well, what's the promo? Promo for MySpace. Easy, Jay Lamont face. <laughs> so I just want to say that. <laughs> I'm just saying, relax, Jamal. You got free time, time and I just moved back to Philly. Right. <laughs> and I just say, I did not move back to Philly. I live in Van Nuys. I live ten minutes. From I just want to make get a close up of a face no one cares about. <laughs> Man, Keith Robinson had lunch in LA too. Is this in high def? Because you need high def to not recognize this Hey, this is Keith Robinson I'm at Helium Comedy Club. It was hot tonight. And you're watching Real Black.